Now, today's papers, I did promise you we'd come back to Brexit, or at least the ones based in London and the rest of England, are predictably dominated by coverage of last night's win for England in the World Cup. But there's a big political story that has the more Eurosceptic press worried. The Telegraph says Mrs May faces a cabinet revolt over what it says is the, quote, softest Brexit. The Daily Mail says Theresa May has been warned not to bring back her controversial plan for a customs partnership, while The Sun puts her head in a jelly and says she's heading for the softest Brexit so far. Do you get it? Jelly? Soft? Yeah, there you go. Wobbly. Anyway, let's talk now to Jacob Rees-Mogg. He's in the central lobby just outside the Commons uh, chamber. Jacob Rees-Mogg, you saw the Tory chief whip yesterday. Uh, the chief whip saw you and your fellow Brexiteers uh, this morning. Are you reassured by what he's had to say? Well, I'm very impressed by the way the chief whip is conducting himself in his role. He is willing to listen to people and understand the concerns that people have. But are you but, reassured? But, 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 but the chief whip says himself that he doesn't make policy. So we're sending messages via the chief whip to those who will make policy. And the concerns that I have and the broader ERG group have are, are being represented by him to those who will make the decisions. Well, let's come on to one particular part of the policy, as I tried to explain to you on this week, last Thursday night. Yeah. The government is going to propose that we remain within the single market for goods. And as a consequence, we'll also say we'll remain in regulatory alignment with the EU on these matters. Uh, what is your response to that? That's not Brexit. It's very important that we are not in regulatory alignment, even if we have similar regulations, because we will need to do trade deals with other countries. And the biggest barrier to trade deals is no longer tariffs, but non-tariff barriers. And we need to be able to accept from countries with high standards, such as Canada and Australia, uh, goods that are produced to similar but not identical standards. And if we insist on regulatory alignment, we will have nothing to offer them in trade deals. So, so this, this, this would be a serious mistake. So when, as I'm sure you did, raise this matter with the chief whip, what was his response? I, I can't tell you what's said in private meetings. I may be unusual in this, but I think private meetings ought to remain private. So you must ask the chief whip. Uh, but, but, well, all right, let me come back to my first question then, without details. Were you reassured by what he had to say about a free, a single market in goods? I, I won't be reassured until I know the details of what comes out on Friday, one way or the other, uh, that really the Chief Whip was listening to our concerns. Uh, he, he's not a policymaker, so it wasn't for him to set out policy. Right. On the other issue, this is more complicated on the customs arrangement. We now understand that it's going to be some kind of amalgam now of um, the customs partnership or agreement and what's been called MaxFAC. It's very, very complicated. I won't go into the details. But there is some, it involves some form of tariff alignment. How, how comfortable are you with that? It's hard to think of a worse idea. What I want to see is the tariffs and non-tariff barriers on food, clothing and footwear removed to ensure that the standard of living of the least well-off in our society is improved. This is a really big economic gain from Brexit. It's a really positive thing uh, and will help the whole of society, but the least well-off most. Bear in mind, over 20% of people's disposable income is spent on food, clothing and footwear. Clothing uh, and footwear are tariffs at over 11% and food at over 23 per cent. So this would be a real gain, and to give that up would be abandoning the benefit of Brexit. It would be a really foolish policy. So if the government's position, nevertheless, is to head towards remaining in the single market de facto for goods with the regulations that go with that, and without the kind of freedom on tariffs that you would like, what do you do? Well, I don't think that would meet the Conservative Party's manifesto. And I think the British electorate would have a right to complain, which is why I think that the government won't do this. I think it would be essentially tearing up the manifesto and keeping us as a vassal state, essentially tied into the European Union without the freedoms that people voted for. Do you so, say the government isn't going to do this? Well, let's, but well, this, we'll this is what the Prime Minister is going to propose 
to the we don't know all the details obviously but in in, in this direction but I'm in no doubt about this and I'm sure you aren't either uh, that this is the direction that the prime minister is going to propose to the cabinet now if the cabinet accepts this what do you do well well there are so many ifs in that it's not really if just one are, if the prime minister suggests it if the cabinet accepts it what then well, do well, I the do? prime I minister think... is going to suggest this well we don't know that do we yes I, I, we I, do the, the political correspondent of ITV thinks he knows exactly what's going to happen uh, but it hasn't been formally announced and I think we've slightly got to wait and see what <coughs> happens and how the cabinet reacts to this and whether the cabinet would accept such a proposal if put forward so I think we ought to have another conversation next week once we know what's actually been proposed I, I, I think we're getting much too speculative well we're, we're, I mean we're almost there it's Wednesday and we've got a pretty idea particularly on the good side I mean that's not really being disputed by the government that that's what they're going to suggest but let me put this to you the government says at least in private, that there simply isn't a majority in Parliament for the kind of Brexit you want. Well, what do you say to that? Uh, there's been a majority in Parliament to pass the Article 50 bill into law and to pass the withdrawal from the European Union into law. So Parliament has already put the key blocks for leaving in. If nothing happens between now and the 29th of March 2019, we leave without a deal. That is our law. So currently, Parliament has a majority for leaving established in British and EU law. That's a pretty powerful position to be in. Except that Parliament could change that. If, oh. there, is, if there is no deal, if there is no deal, Parliament could decide that rather than go to the no deal option and we just come out, Parliament could decide to keep us in the EEA and in the Customs Union uh, as a, for the foreseeable future, and Brussels could go along with that. It's not well, 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 a done that we crash out. Ho hold on, because when you say Parliament, you say that, yes, theoretically, Parliament can legislate, but you must remember that the government controls the legislative timetable, that legislation on private members' bills on Fridays doesn't go through unless it has almost unanimous support. So what you're saying is that the government would have to bring through a <coughs> bill um, calling for us to remain within the EEA and the Prime Minister has been absolutely clear that she is opposed to that. So you're speculating actually that the pro-Europeans would try to bring down the government. But I think that's very unlikely. I think the most Conservatives are fully backing Mrs May and want the government to carry but on. You, your father was a journalist. You keep your ear to the ground. You will know that the government is briefing out that no deal is now not an option. That's what we're being told. Well, I, the government is also briefing out, and I, I absolutely accept, Mr Neil, that the lobby is very often better informed than backbench MPs as to what the government's thinking is on a particular day, but sometimes it speculates on things to see what the reaction is rather than having determined them, because the government is also briefing that it's doing a lot more on preparing for no deal than it has so far made public. So there are two different stories coming out via the lobby, and your guess is as good as mine as to which one represents the real position. Uh, can we agree, though, that from what we know so far and from all the mood music, you are not going to get the kind of Brexit you want? Oh, I, we'll wait and see. We'll have to see what the uh, Withdrawal and Implementation Bill says, what it proposes. We'll have to see what comes out of the Cabinet meeting on Friday uh, and then how votes fall in the Houses of Parliament. We're a long way from my feeling that we're not going to get the type of Brexit, not that I want, but that the country voted for. 17.4 million people voted to be free from the European Union and for the great economic opportunities that will bring, the ability to take back control, the reinvigoration right. no, no, of know. our democracy. No, we know it's, all that. I know, but sometimes it's forgotten. Right. We get into the weeds and we forget this glorious opportunity that the nation is taking okay, for itself. OK, well, let me drag you back to the weeds, if I may, for a minute. If the Cabinet does agree to broadly what I've been suggesting will be the government's position, where does that leave you? Where does that leave you and your fellow Brexiteers? Are you prepared to defy the government if that is the direction it goes in? Well, I will give you a specific example. 
If the agreement from the Cabinet is that we will give the European Union £39 billion merely on the good faith of the EU's negotiating a trade deal, I will vote against that. I don't think I can be clearer than that. I don't know the details and I think that position is unlikely. But if that were to emerge, of course I would vote against it and many others would too. Let me, my, my colleague Laura Kunzberg is here. You will know her well. Laura, what would uh, you like to ask I uh, just Jacob Rees-Mogg? I just wonder, um, Jacob Rees-Mogg, do you trust cabinet ministers on your side of the argument to make these points firmly enough? Because if you did trust them to make the argument, you wouldn't have to be scurrying around demanding to see the chief whip this morning, would you? Well, I don't think there was any scurrying. I think there was a gentle okay, amble to see the chief whip. scurrying, however you want to describe um, it. But do you trust those people on your side of the argument who are meant to be putting your case around the cabinet table? Yes, of course I do. But it's important that people know that the cabinet ministers on my side of the argument represent a large body of support within the party. Uh, and the numbers of MPs who turned up to a meeting at less than 12 hours' notice, they didn't know the meeting room until 20 minutes before, uh, and we had jolly nearly 50 MPs turn up to see the Chief Whip. I, I think that shows that there is deep-seated support within the Conservative benches uh, for delivering on the Brexit that was in the manifesto and that the Prime Minister promised uh, in her Mansion House speech, Florence uh, and um, a Lancaster House speech. How parlous is the government's position now on this? Well, actually, I think the real problem for the government has been the recent decline in collective responsibility, with ministers taking random pot shots at each other. And that needs to stop, because that's very debilitating to any government. And if we get out of Friday a reassertion of collective responsibility, that would be very important. Uh, and then we can get back to considering the details of Brexit. So you, you think ministers should leave the random pot shots to you? Backbenchers are not bound <laughs> by collective responsibility. <laughs> no, I understand. Uh, uh, and, and that's very important because constitutionally our system of government uh, becomes very difficult um, w without collective responsibility. Are you aware yet? Do you have a broad idea of what is going to be proposed on the customs arrangements. I mean, as I say, we, we've got a harder deal uh, idea of what they plan on traded goods mm -hmm. and the cost that could come with that. Do you have any idea, a broader idea, of what is now happening, some kind of amalgam of the customs partnership and the max fact, the, the high tech facilitation approach? All I know is what has been reported uh, by various correspondents like Laura as to what the government is proposing. I don't know whether those will turn out to be what uh, the government decides in the end. Uh, what I've heard so far is concerning and would not be a sensible way to run our economy after we've left the European Union. Jacob Rees-Mogg, we thank you for your time Great this pleasure. morning. We'll, we'll leave it there. We'll